Um, thanks, Michael. And it's really awesome to be back in London and to see so many people out here today. Um, we have around 140 of you out here today, and which is a bit more than what we had last year, and hopefully we'll continue to grow. Um, just curious, for how many of you this is your first Civicon? Uh, can you? Oh, so, approxim so approximately half. Uh, <laughs> your first Civicon, is this your first Civicon? Okay, so 50% plus one. Um, so Civi is uh, approximately 10 years old. We'll be celebrating our 10th year anniversary in March of uh, next year. So we are pretty close. So this is our 10th year. And one of the things, um, and earlier this year, Michael, as community managers, started teasing out what our vision and mission is and trying to document that and write that down. Oh, you can't hear? Um, is this on? Or? Or should I speak in this one? Okay. Um, okay, better? Okay. Uh, so one of the things that uh, Michael has been working with many members of the community is a vision and mission statement. And you can go uh, read the full vision and mission statement um, at the short URL out there. Uh, it's on the wiki and on the blog. And um, a key thing that drives many of us is the social good that um, the key measure of our success is the social good and benefit that CIVI does to the um, does to the sector as a whole and to various nonprofit organizations out there. And we hope and continue uh, to work with lots of lar both large and small organizations in spreading the word and giving them good um, affordable software tools. Um, We'll skip technology there. Um, so here's just a, just a small sample of some of the organizations that are using CIVI CRM. By no way is it comprehensive. Um, and our very own Cambridge Union Society, Michael's alumni organization. Um, and so this, this graph is pretty cool. It shows uh, it's a map of our registered sites and uh, inlaid on the, on the world map. And it shows the extent of uh, CIVI's reach across the world. And it's, uh, it's, it's kind of neat to see how far CIVI has pervaded across the, um, across the world. Uh, obviously pretty dominant in both uh, America and Europe, but also spread uh, across many other parts of the world. So it's kind of nice to just take a moment and reflect and look at that map. So we are. So I'm going to divide the part, the talk into three different parts. The first part, I'm going to talk about the ecosystem and, and a general growth and where we are today. Um, the second part, I'm going to talk about 4.5 and 4.6 and where we are with those releases and what's coming in the future. And in the, and in the third part of the talk, I'm going to get, call the chairman um, and um, and talk about the membership program and the partner program and a few other sustainability initiatives that we are starting off with. So with regard to the ecosystem, in our partner program today, we've got 57 partners, 8,500 uh, newsletter recipients. I don't know how many of you don't get the newsletter. In case you don't, you should sign up for it immediately um, after this talk. Um, it's an amazing newsletter. Work has been done on it by Katie and Linda Wu Pagano, and the September newsletter was the best I've ever seen. Really good content, really good design, a great example of Civi Mail. We had 4,200 downloads last month, and this wasn't including the 4.5 release, which was just released last week. So I assume there was another 2,000 or so of it um, just last week. Um, we also have sprints all around the world. We had a sprint in uh, DC two weeks ago after CIVI user summit out there, where we had 15 plus participants. We have a sprint after this conference where we have 25 plus participants. So we have sprints all across, um, typically after conferences. And we have people giving anywhere between three to seven days of their time, helping with the project and pushing the project forward. So that's yet another way to get involved with the project and help make the project go uh, further and meet your goals. And finally, just last month, we had 450 plus code commits on our repository. And Tim ran some stats yesterday. And for the 4.5 release, we had 107, right? 
uh, 107 different uh, unique individuals commit some piece of code into the repository which made it into the release. So that's quite a, um, that's quite a large number. And how many commits was it? Um, uh, 4,200 commits went into the four, uh, 4 .5 release. And uh, Kurun will be talking about the 4.5 release in case you want to learn more about all the various features and uh, things that are coming as part of it. Um, I'm going to go through the next couple of slides really, really quickly. There are just a few nice, pretty graphs and pretty pictures out there. Um, if you want details and you want to analyze the graph and uh, look at the graphs in more detail, I'm going to put it on the wiki later today so you can go back and spend, uh, spend time on it. Just the ecosystem of where people download it from with the US and UK being up there. Um, here's a picture of the number of extensions and more importantly, out here. Um, so we have this ping back mechanism where various sites can ping back and give us some, uh, some high level statistics of what the project, um, of what their install is about. So based on various metrics, we think they are between, uh, they are a bit more than 10,000 plus active sites out there. And across those sites, we manage 120 uh, million contacts, 64 million contributions, and 10 million plus event registrations. And most likely, all the big sites out there actually don't ping back because most of the big sites are behind their firewall and behind their network, and they don't have packets going out of their network. So this, include, this does not include any of the big sites out there. So it does not include Wikimedia, which probably adds another 10 million to all those numbers. It does not include New York State Senate, which probably adds another 20 to 40 million across some of those numbers. And any of the other big organizations that we aren't aware of. So fairly impressive numbers as to what we've been able to achieve over the past 10 years. Um, this is uh, the, the commit graph, here's the issue graph. Um, so over, um, so obviously a lot of work has gone into the project, a lot of code has been written, a lot of bugs have been fixed. And to a large extent, we need to really acknowledge and um, appreciate the hard work done by many members of the core team. And we've got a few, out, uh, few of them out here today. Um, and you, those are the current members of the core team spread across the UK, uh, India, and the US. Um, Two new additions, uh, uh, two actually, uh, more, uh, Dave Greenberg is the project manager and co-founder of the project. Josh Gowan was hired fairly recently, around four months ago, and he's leading fundraising for the project uh, on a part-time basis. And Michael McAndrew is the community manager of the project. So while the core team does a fair bit of work, we've got tons of contributors out there who do also an amazing amount of work. Um, in specific, Joanne Chester led the documentation efforts and did an amazing job with the 4.5 documentation. She started it off approximately, was it, at, it was at the Tahoe Sprint, right? Or the, well, uh, at the Tahoe Sprint last year, and, um, and she's been really pushing it forward. And there are lots of other people who helped with various releases over the years. So an event like this, to get 140 people out here to manage the logistics, to manage the uh, speakers, to manage the sessions requires a lot of local help. And we couldn't have done, um, done it without, um, uh, without a lot of help from many of you out here today. So we'd definitely like to thank um, everyone um, on this list, and especially Mai, who's done a lot of uh, work coordinating this whole event. So uh, thank you to all the organizers. And finally, um, to make an event like this sustainable, we need um, a sponsors, a sponsors who actually give us uh, hard dollars and pounds. And so thank you to the silver and bronze sponsors, and especially to the gold sponsors, uh, which is Circle Interactive, Civigo, Promixium, CompuCorp, NFP Services, Veda, and Zing. So if you were mentioned in the past three slides, so if you're a core contributor, a, um, a strong, a superstar contributor, one of the sponsors, could you please stand up? So we just released 4.5.0 um, a week ago. Um, uh, yeah, exactly a week ago. It was uh, last Wednesday. It was last Thursday. 
And 4050 was probably one of our larger development cycles. I think um, it took us 10 months to release it. It also had uh, probably a most extensive alpha and beta releases. So we think it's a fairly solid, fairly stable release. And one of the things that we incorporated into for, uh, in, uh, to make it uh, so stable was uh, continuous integration where Tim spent a fair bit of time and we have all uh, PRs that are being merged into core run through a gamut of unit and web uh, unit tests, unit and API tests, and we're now also getting web tests into it. Um, and we are continuing to work on it and make that integration a lot more solid. So stability is super, super important to us for 4.5 and future releases. Another focus over the past few months uh, and years has been extensibility. We now have more than 500 plus extensions out there. Uh, this has, uh, along with a lot of other improvements, which make it a lot easier to write extensions. Um, a lot of API improvements, a lot of CVX stuff, which allows you to automatically build a, a lot of the framework around extensions and a lot of localization and internationalization work with regard to extensions. And how many, actually, how many of you have downloaded and installed either a beta version of 4.5 or the latest 4.5.0? Wow, that's surprising. That's, that's less than 10% of you. So we need the rest 90, the other 90% to go, go and download it sometime later today or tomorrow. Um, so Fortify also has got a lot of JavaScript and usability improvements, which is primarily led by Coleman, a lot of pop-up windows, a lot of Ajax to make the experience a lot more seamless. And um, Kurund is giving a talk immediately after this session on 4.5. So for the rest of you who haven't seen 4.5 in action, I, def I definitely recommend that session. Um, in addition to all the work under the hood, there's a lot of new stuff in 4.5, and I'm going to go through it really quickly. Um, Civi case, in addition to the XML format, we've introduced a brand new UI uh, for it, thanks to uh, a collaboration with NDI. Um, we also have partial payments, thanks to our collaboration with the Great Lakes Planetarium Association. Uh, a lot of soft credit improvements, thanks to AGH strategies and uh, the funds gathered from the previous uh, CVE User Summit in DC. Um, SMS scheduled reminders, which I think was work done by Parvez and Deepak, and I'm not very sure who the client was, um, probably LLR. An improved user guide, thanks to Joanne. So from a product perspective for 4.5 and future, some of our goals include um, really solid releases, primarily with continuous integration. Um, and unfortunately, whether we like it or not, actually it's a good thing. Technology continues to evolve. When Civi started 10 years ago, JavaScript did not even exist. And today, pretty much a lot of the web is completely JavaScript based. And so with things like Angular, which is a JavaScript framework, we kind of need to start evolving and moving fast and a lot of the technology into the new world. And that's just part and parcel of life. So a lot of the stuff that is in 4.5, a lot of the stuff coming in 5.0, and this is a plug for Tim session, um, which is happening tomorrow. Um, again, we need to start incorporating more and more of these technologies into new releases. And finally, to grow the ecosystem, to make it a lot more um, solid and get more people involved in it, we need to make Civi really easy to extend, modify, and customize. So what's coming in 4.6, which is going to be a short release, primarily because there were a couple of features which we couldn't get in 4.5 and we didn't want to slip 4.5 too much more. So there's, uh, there's some good work done by the Google Summer of Code students a project run by Xavier and Kevin. Um, we had five projects submitted, out of which I think three to four of them are in fairly solid, uh, pretty good state, and most, okay, well five, five have, been, have been completed, uh, out of which we want to incorporate at least four of them in core, and the fifth one will uh, be shipped as an extension, right? And there is a, uh, there's also a session on Google Summer of Code by Xavier and Corinne later today. Um, so a couple of uh, the CV mail, A-B testing and usability into core for 4.6. Recurring events, again a project uh, which Lindsay, I don't see her out here today, has been spearheading, uh, has been talking about for the past three years and it's finally coming to fruition thanks to the work done by Parvez and Deepak uh, and sponsored by Zing. Um, sales tax and invoicing, a project that Jamie uh, from CompuCorp has been pushing forward and has worked a lot towards. 
And uh, so now I'd like to just transition to the last part of the talk, which is about sustainability and how the community can be involved and in some of the various initiatives that we've done. Um, so I'm going to invite Eric Hommel, who likes to be called the chairman of Civic Co-op and chairman among all his titles, um, to talk a bit about why Civic Co-op is a partner and how Civic Co-op contributes uh, in different ways uh, to the ecosystem and the project. Eric? And I will. Let me start by uh, telling you who I am. I'm Carlo Rivera Cano, and I was introduced to the Dignity Award in 2009 as part of Ease of Work, which is a two man band from France, the Civic Co op. And we were looking for a CRM for a housing corporation purely out of curiosity. Um, it is now 2014. I'm part of Civic Co op, which is a cooperative organization helping NGOs. Helping NGOs achieve their goals using civic CRM in all sorts of ways. We do it with hosting, with extending, with customizing, with project management, and helping organizations to change in the most dramatic way. Um, can we move on? So why are we the civic CRM partner? Um, first of all, because it enables us to do what we like to do, which is help NGOs achieve their goals with technology, but also with social change, because it's a good find a new tool that doesn't, that doesn't show up with different behavior, usually nothing happens. So it's the combination of the two that makes it interesting for us. And we like to do that because we like to make the world a better place, or at least that's what we think it, it would be a better place. We, ne we will never know, but we like to contribute. And I think it's referring to that social good that Lobo was talking about earlier. And obviously, we also need to earn our daily bread. And if we do so, we like to stay in our flow and do the things we're good at and share uh, between ourselves the things which every individual brings as a talent. So that's why it's important for us to be a city partner. We believe in being a partner because we believe that it will help NGOs to find the boys and girls who know about city CRM, who know what the system does, what functionality is there, how to achieve your goals, who will contribute to the community and make sure the whole ecosystem grows. It's also important because it makes it easier for us to work together as partners, because we will know that we know what we're talking about, we contribute to the community, etc., etc., etc. So that's important. It's also important because it helps to raise funds for the uh, required but not so sexy tasks like making everything under the hood a little better and more stable and new. And because as a peer group, as partners, we can all help to grow the digital <coughs> ecosystem, which will make it better for everyone. So what do we do? What do we contribute to the community? Apart from obviously just being there and helping NGOs and earning our bread. We check forum posts on a daily basis and try to see if there's anything, anything there that we can answer, and if we can, we do. Now, if everyone would do that, then the forum would be just as successful as it is today. So you're all probably doing it. We help host City CRM community webinars in the introductory series, but also on special topics, if it's possible. We do City CRM developer training with Xavier, with YAP whenever it's possible. We help to review extensions, which we also need to share in our page for on the website. We publish the extensions we develop, if possible. And we participate in and help organize meetups, sprints, and CityCons. And because we're a cooperative, um, if there is some money left at the end of the year in the cooperation after we've done our common stuff, we donate that profit back to the community to support projects that need to be done. That's what we do. And we do that because we believe in the city community and because we believe the city is the community. We believe that we will all benefit if the ecosystem grows. 
and we believe we can and should all play our part. And most importantly, we believe that if we are prepared to give, we will get a lot. And that's really why we are part of this partnership program. Our story. Back to Lobo. Thank you, Eric. Excuse me while I just... Um, so for uh, those of, hmm? oh, sorry, um, so just to give people a rough idea on where the money that we try to raise goes in, we have our total expenditures today is approximately 600K out of which 90% of it is in salaries. Um, and again, these numbers are going to be available on the wiki. Um, and And for our revenue targets, in a year or two, our goal is to only get uh, 100K from foundations, 200K from consulting, and 150K from the partner program, and 150K from the member program. So that kind of gets us pretty close to sustainability, and we think on a really nice path for the next 10 years. Uh, and hence the partner program and uh, the, very, uh, the newly introduced member program. And Josh Gobbins um, has been pushing this forward over the past three months. He's worked a lot with Michael and Dave to try to make this a reality. And so while the partner program is focused on the implementer ecosystem out there, the member program is focused more on the user ecosystem out there to try to get the membership, uh, to try to get all our users out there to play a more active role in supporting the ecosystem. And there's a really good saying about membership isn't about paying to use the CRM. It's about protecting uh, the project. It's, uh, it's about helping the project grow, helping the project thrive. Um, uh, so just a brief description of the member program. It's geared towards end user organization through which organizations can support the project. It's intended to help sustain Civi CRM so that we can continue having uh, good regular releases, continue growing the community, having solid documentation, and continue keeping the project free and open source. And it impacts every organization that uses Civi CRM. Today, we've got 10,000 plus organizations using Civi. We hope to grow that to 100K plus over the next few years. And to do that, we need both support from the implementers out there and the end user organizations out there. And we already have quite a few people who've signed up to be the member program. We'd love to talk to any and all end user organizations out here over the next few days. If you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, please approach any of us and we'd be happy to talk and share uh, stuff with you. Um, so that's, uh, that's it for the state of the project. Um, I'm going to hand it off to Mike, uh, to Mark, sorry, from the Green Party, who's going to talk about how the Green Party uses Civi CRM, the experiences, the mostly positive ups and a couple of downs. Um, it's cool. Looks good. We're good to go. So, where shall I start? I'll start by getting a microphone, shall I? Everyone hear me okay, yeah? This isn't part of the act, I'm just pouring some water. So what I'm going to talk about, this is not a story for me about technology. This is really a story about what makes me really mad and what ignites my passion and what I choose to spend my time with and what we get angry about and what kind of motivates us to say that things need to change or you know, Lobo talked about the kind of requirement for kind of social good, I'm sure. Everyone in this room has something which really kind of motivates them or you, know, you wouldn't be here. I mean, the whole reason for being part of the civic community is because you know things need to change and you know things can be better. And most of you probably have ideas about how to make some of those things better. And for me, civic is a kind of core part of 
that tool set, which really allows you to kind of really deliver that change and make things happen. So currently I'm management coordinator at the Green Party. That's a, a voluntary position. I've been, uh, it's an elected position within the party. So I sit on the national executive. Uh, I'm, this is my fourth year and I've been, I would say intimately involved with CIVI over that period. We actually started using CIVI in the party about five years ago. And so I, I inherited the system and it was, it showed great promise, but was perhaps a little bit unloved within the organization. And the story over the past three, four years has been working with lots of really amazing people, a lot of whom are in this room, um, to kind of help us really define what SEVI was for, how we were going to help it to kind of shape the organization, and how we were going to help it to really kind of build the community and you know, really kind of step up our organization. So this is really a story about how I decided not to get mad, how we were going to get organized. And that really is the kind of theme for, for kind of everything I do. In, in my day job, actually, I've been involved in digital for about 20 years. I started out in a little uh, web design agency in Birmingham in 1995, which seems a long time ago. I think it was a long time ago, which is why it seems a long time ago. Um, so today, though, I work f four days a week at Blue State Digital. And Blue State are the guys who did the Obama campaign. Uh, and they are a fascinating company. They, they have a kind of, I would say, a competitive product um, in the, the BSD tools, but kind of a slightly different kind of market, I guess, for how they use that. And it's not quite as open as something like Civi is. And you know, there, there's always some things, there's some great things the tools do. Um, and then when I saw that uh, we've got A-B testing on Civi Mail, that was like Nirvana. That's fantastic. When I heard that we're going to get A-B testing in Civi Mail, as soon as you start doing things at A-B testing for that type of activity, it utterly changes an organization. It's absolutely core to kind of driving success. So I'm really excited that things like that are going to come into to Civi over the next few months. But anyway, so what I'll talk about is largely, I suppose, how we fixed what was broken. And for us, it was a leaky bucket with membership. We had lots of members joining and lots of members leaving. So membership never really increased and membership revenue definitely didn't increase so because we didn't have enough money we didn't have we couldn't spend we couldn't hire staff we couldn't work with agencies we couldn't fix what needed to be broken so it was, it's a story really about kind of incremental change and in how we actually implemented that um, and really it's a story about how we created the conditions for future success you know, you know, it's, it's really we're really using SEVI as not just the core of our membership activity but uh, it's, our, it's core to our supporter strategy and volunteers. And volunteers and supporters are absolutely the lifeblood of any political organization, any organization that needs to organize to make change, I guess. Um, and, and really for us, it wasn't, I, I, I think, historic. I, I suppose the way I used to work was I'd set goals and I'd try and achieve those goals. And you know, I think what, what Civis, working with Civis taught me, working with the Green Party, is that kind of, you know, it's m much more about generating momentum and that kind of incremental change. You know, the big mo, as uh, President Bartlett in the West Wing refers to, you know, it's about the momentum and the continuous movement is much more important than whether or not we've hit our goals for this quarter or this year or, or, or six month period or whatever. So just for those of you who don't know, the Green Party in England and Wales is made, it's a federal organization. It's made up of 220 local parties every single one of which has a strong opinion on how the party should be run. Uh, it's arranged into kind of 10 regions. Um, we've got almost 20,000 members. I actually checked it just before coming up. We've got 19,353 members. And I know that because SEVI is really up to date and also the fact that I reload it pretty much every uh, 20 minutes or so because our membership has increased by uh, almost 40% since the beginning of the year. And really, that success we've had in growing the membership is really down to the work we've done over the past two or three years. We also have about 30,000 supporters and volunteers, and we hope to kind of treble that over the next 12 months. Um, electorally, we have one MP, the utterly amazing Caroline Lucas down in Brighton Pavilion. We have, since May, we have three MEPs. Uh, we, we got another MEP down in the Southwest, Molly Scott Cato. We get two assembly members in London. Uh, we have one Lord who's uh, actively trying to abolish the House of Lords, so that's quite fun. <laughs> and uh, we have over 160 uh, principal councillors as well. So what am I mad about, I guess, coming back to the theme? So the Green Party, I suppose our focus is on solving the 
what I, I think I would hope all of us see is probably this generation's most pressing problem, which is that of climate change. So the thing I've come to realize, and certainly the Green Party really embodies, is climate change can only be solved by changing the underlying systems that generate it. Yeah, Naomi Klein's book, you might have read, This Changes Everything, is really all about how <clears throat> your, the growth of kind of free market capitalism over the last 20 years, don't worry, this isn't a politics lecture, but you know, how it came at the worst possible time um, as climate change emissions really kind of shot up over the last 20, 30 years, and we're kind of locked into this vicious cycle. So the kind of the social aspects of the political system, our economy, capitalism, and so on, are intimately linked to fixing climate change. So it's really a kind of an all-encompassing problem. And for me, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I fear for the future that my daughter's going to live in. Your seven-year-old daughter, you know, what's she going to face over the next kind of 20, 30 years if we don't change things? But I'm also really hopeful because the solutions to climate change, we know about them. This, there are solutions. They are here. We can implement them. It just requires the political will to actually make it happen. And so in order to really deliver against that political will, we need strong parties calling for those changes. And the base of that strong party has to be a community effort. You're bringing in lots of people to kind of actually kind of make that happen. Um, so I'm, I'm confident because I'm not going to get mad. We're going to get organized. And that's really where SEVI comes in for us. So as I mentioned already, all of us have a purpose. All of us have a passion. And for, to really deliver against those passions. I was going to deliver this without notes, and then I saw Ed Miliband's speech the other day, and I thought, <laughs> you know what, I'll, I think I'll make sure I take everything off. Um, you know, it's really important that you define your purpose, have a strategy for kind of how you're going to uh, uh, actually deliver against that, and then rinse and repeat relentlessly that organization over and over and over again is really what we tried to kind of put together. So. This is a quote from a book by Mark Pack and Edward Maxfield, two liberal Democrats, but you don't hold that against them. Um, and really, they identified that there should be one helper for every 200 electors if you want to win any election. So if you're in a council seat of, say, 7,000 electors, you probably need 25 to 35 people actively involved in the campaign to win, to win a councillor. If you are in a constituency of, say, 50,000 people, and you want to elect an MP, you need probably 300 to 400 people actively involved in that campaign. Now, for a long time, the Green Party's membership was kind of ticking along at about 10,000, 12,000. Our largest party happened to be in Brighton, where we have 600 people. But across the country, we, th there was no way we, we had enough members or were going to have enough members to actually elect enough people to kind of deliver the change that, that we want to see in the world. So, it, it really drove the strategy that we had to rely on people who aren't members of a political party to help us out. You know, being a member of a political party is a pretty weird thing these days. Most people don't do it. And so even though we clearly want to attract members because it brings in revenue and help and so on, we really need to rely on people who don't want to be a member of a party but are willing to give some time, maybe donate, maybe kind of knock on a door, deliver a leaflet or so on. Because you know, that kind of, those kind of supporters your yeah, supporters are the easiest way to get more donations, the easiest way to get more members. Yeah, no one is going to join you if they haven't had some contact with you already, have seen what you're like, have heard what you have to say. Um, it's the easiest way to get more votes and definitely the easiest way to get volunteers. So over the past 12 months especially, we're really, we've rolled out a series of services so that local parties uh, can access volunteers and supporters in their, their area. They have access to that information. So in SEVI, they can go on to SEVI CRM. They'll see the uh, members, supporters, volunteers in their area with all of their contact details. They can get in touch with them. And you know, that has utterly transformed the fortunes of these kind of 220 local parties because they also get a daily email update when new supporters and volunteers kind of join in their local area. And it's really changed the nature of the kind of membership officers and kind of what they do. Previously, membership officers would download it, would get sent an Excel spreadsheet from party office if they were, they were lucky, and they would report how many members they had back to their local party meeting each month, and that was it. But now, of course, they've got a really uh, substantial and very useful kind of campaigning tool they can use to actually go and recruit people and ask what they want to help with and kind of 
Yeah, it, it's really changed the nature of kind of what they do uh, within the organization. And we kind of encourage people to kind of look for these three skills. This, this is probably coming from, as I spent, I suppose, a long time running my own advertising agency, about 12 years. Um, so I guess this is my penance. This is me trying to make up for all the bad I've done in the world by kind of fixing it with the Green Party. But um, there's kind of three, um, three roles from any good team if you want to kind of generate communications, make action, is the creative, the manager, and the planner. You know, the creative is the heart. They're the ones who kind of come up with the messages that are really going to generate that passion and get people to take action. They're maybe going to get angry or emotive about something. You know, the manager is the person who's really going to help get things organized, make sure things are in place. You know, make sure we've got the funding. They're going to make sure the volunteers turn up on time. And the planner is the head. They're going to decide kind of when things need to happen. You know, how much resources they need. They're going to work back from elections and kind of plan out how the creative and the manager really needs to do their job. So we encourage local parties to kind of look amongst their volunteers and actually find these people. And that's only possible because you know, we've given ordinary members of the public the ability to kind of put in their details and say how they'd like to help us and then put that information in the hands of the people that can use it most. And that's kind of at the heart of kind of what we've built over the past couple of years. So overall, we're trying to kind of build our capacity to deliver change. We're trying to improve our capability so we're better uh, or we have more tools at our disposal and we're improving their competence as well. So that's meant lots of kind of training, trying to identify regional champions so local parties can organize within a region rather than just be reliant on themselves. <clears throat> it's, it's meant fixing a lot of stuff. It's meant standardizing a number of systems. I think we had... I think when I joined, there wasn't a content management system that we weren't using somewhere in the party. I mean, it was kind of, a, well, it wasn't as bad as I've seen it in some places, but it was a bit chaotic. And um, we've got that down. We're only using about four different systems now, which is a, a kind of great improvement, but you know, maybe we'll get down even less in the future. Um, because the, the kind of basic toolkit we now give to each local party is they have their website, which is normally built in Mod X. I don't know if anyone uses Mod X. It's kind of, it's okay. It's, yeah. I'd love to get everything onto Drupal, but we only, on our members' website, which, um, let me just pull on, I'll pull all of this up. So every party has access to a website, it's every CRM. The members' website, we only just upgraded to Drupal 7. I know it's kind of, it's like, some of my eyes are open to all the kind of things you can do. It's fantastic. But, um, so we're a little bit behind there, but it's kind of been, you know, we're constantly making improvements in that. You know, Civi Mail, as I mentioned, the, kind of the ability to do A-B testing in Civi Mail, that's just so good. It's just going to completely transform our ability to kind of campaign and really identify what works. You know, working at Blue State, there's a real kind of mantra about email. You know, of this, I think of the $630 million that... Obama raised online, 70% of it was directly driven through email, just because they really kind of worked the systems, they really worked the sign up pages, they kind of, and, and they kind of, in the donation page in the Obama campaign, they, they took, they did 270 A-B tests over a 12 month period, um, but that generated an extra kind of 40% sort of donation income than would have happened otherwise. So it's, it's kind of, it's really kind of well worth it. But on the other side as well, we really make it ridiculously easy for local parties to put in data into the system. So, because a lot of where the data comes from is knocking on doors and actually speaking to people. So actually having a system, and we still got more work to do, but we're improving all the time, where you know, if you can put information directly in through a mobile phone or a tablet or whatever, that's great. More often than not, it's probably gonna be lots of bits of paper that need to be kind of collated and then entered into the system. So we just have, you know, Kind of a bulk system where you can go in and put kind of 10 names in at a time you know, to really kind of make it as easy as possible. All the different sign up forms from all of these different ModX websites all go into Civi straight away. So we're really using Civi as that kind of central uh, database for everything that we do. I suppose what we've really fixed more than anything else is, is the kind of the membership problem we had, I touched upon already. <coughs> Excuse me, the pollution in London, you see, someone should do something about it. So. <coughs> um, this is, uh, hopefully you can see it's a bit uh, small, but the, the membership growth over the past 
12 years or so. But 12 years back, we had about 5,000 members. And that steadily grew as we had some success. It was a bit of an uptake here when Caroline Lucas was elected as leader. And we kind of, what we thought, we steadily grew, but something happened here, we just plateaued. Unfortunately, this plateau coincided with me joining. <laughs> okay. And so you think, well, well, that's a bit odd. Surely I'm come in to meant to fix things. But what had actually happened, whilst we thought we were having good growth here, all that was happening was we weren't lapsing members. So we had a substantial number of members who were members on paper, but weren't giving us any money, hadn't renewed their subscriptions. We weren't asking them for money. It wasn't their fault because the systems were just broken. So actually the real, I would say, the real curve is actually something much more like that because this three year period is when we were going through sorting out who should be a member, who shouldn't be a member, kind of recontacting people that needed to kind of resubscribe, actually choosing to lapse people, which it's funny because in, in, in the office, when people are kind of that close to it, they're like, what, you, you, you want to cancel someone's membership? It's like, well, you know, they're not giving us any money. And we've contacted them now. We've given them an opportunity. But you're just by getting the kind of the basics right, we're able to really kind of sort out the processes in party office. And also it coincided, I guess, with us really trying to work more with the grain of civvy. Early on, we had maybe tried to kind of change or, or, or customize Civi to fit more with the way we always did things. And I think we realized there needs to be a, more of a middle ground. Yes, of course. I mean, we still do customize and we have lots of kind of customizations in Civi, but we're trying to work more with, more with the grain of the system, more with the grain of the technology. And, you know, that's having some real success. And, yeah, again, I mentioned some of the people in the room. Michael McAndrew um, was kind of really pivotal for us early on and kind of helping us get the system. Um, and then it handed over to Circle, and we've got Maya and Dave, I think uh, they have, and a few others from Circle, and uh, Parvez as well, who's kind of, who's been great on direct debit and so on, just helping us get all that sorted out. Um, I think as I've got older, I choose only to work with gold sponsors these days. I think that's just a habit. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but they've been really kind of pivotal. And you know, we've had some very kind of painful upgrades, I think five painful upgrades. It's like we only installed 4.46 last week. And then it's like, and for about two days, we had you, you're the latest version at the bottom. And then 4.5 popped up. And not again, bloody hell. So, I mean, we'll get, I think we'll probably skip 4.5 and wait for 4.6. We'll see how we go on. Um, so we've really kind of wrestled and wrangled with it um, over the time, but I think we're really kind of getting somewhere now. I'm really excited about the kind of the, the campaigning platform we've built. I'm really excited that the, the, the extent to which local parties have really kind of embraced the technology and are really kind of using it to, to kind of organize themselves. Um, so I, th I think we, we haven't fixed all the issues. There's always more to be done. But yeah, the, the fact now we can use web form Exciting. That's going to be good. So things will look prettier, if nothing else. Um, and you're also with working at Blue State. Blue State actually have the um, uh, Labour Party account. So it's a bit odd, I've got to admit, because <laughs> it's a small team in London. They're really fantastic. Um, but often there'll be a Labour Party meeting happening over the corner, and then suddenly everyone will stop talking, and they'll all look over at me, and I'll look at them, and they'll stop talking, and, and we'll just try and move on. Um, but there's a lot of amazing stuff the Labour Party are doing. They have 20 full-time people in, employed in their digital team in the Labour Party. So what is good is they can make some, they can make some progress and we can kind of frankly copy what they do and kind of uh, employ that ourselves. So we've got the kind of tools and capability to be able to do that. Um, and also, also it's, it, it's really great when other parties kind of do this type of stuff. You have Ed Miliband and um, Thingy Clegg and David Cameron, um, you're holding up copies of The Sun. So when we, when we kind of do a little Facebook graphic like this, it took about 20 minutes, and we end up getting 250 new members just off the back of a graphic like that. Because we have the systems in place to actually kind of take care of that now, whereas if we'd done that two or three years ago, it, we, A, we probably wouldn't have done stuff like this, but it would have just kind of bounced off. So, so what we have now, I guess, is, I suppose, this platform for growth. Yeah, we have 
all these mod X sites, which are kind of integrated with Seve. We're playing with Drupal a lot more. Um, you know, the broken systems are fixed. And so we've sorted out the mess, and now it's kind of really about action, I guess. So I would hope over the next few couple of years, we're going to continue that kind of unprecedented membership growth. I would really like to see us add another five or 10,000 members in the next um, 12 to 18 months. Uh, we want to kind of quadruple our supporter base and just kind of really kind of reach out and kind of get more people involved. Because ultimately, that's what helps us fight campaigns about the issues we care about, about climate change, about pollution, about social justice, poverty, equality, and so on. That's what will help us win elections. That's what will help us contribute towards preventing climate change, either directly by being elected or influencing the um, decisions of people like this who, who control the reins of power. And so it's really going to allow us to kind of deliver on our purpose and you know, make things happen, you know, to actually get organized. So I really hope you all have a great Civicon. I think this is my third Civicon. Um, lots of good stuff to see over the next kind of couple of days. And whatever you care about, don't get mad, get organized. Okay, thank you. <laughs>